This is how you format your problem solution paper. The basic guidelines are that your paper must be an MLA format. It should have at least four pages, more likely five to seven. Then on top of that, you need to have a works cited page. The writing should be in standard American English, well structured, easy to follow, free from personal references and unnecessary wordiness. And we'll talk about this again. Some of y'all totally uh, did not pay attention to using I, me, we, um, us, our, this is not about you and you're not to write that. And you're also not to write you. So those things need to disappear from your proposal. Your introduction should have an attention grabber. It should set the context for any necessary background on your topic. So you may not presume that everyone knows about, let's say homelessness in Dallas. Uh, but you need to give background information. You will state the thesis, but you'll do that in your solutions and you'll forecast the argument. Your audience would be the entity, the person, the foundation, whoever it is who can approve and provide money if necessarily ne necessary for your plan. Or plans. And your purpose is to persuade them that this is an urgent problem that should be taken care of immediately. Um, these are the four sections of the proposal, and you'll have these. And when you look at the sample problem solution proposal, you'll see that that's exactly how it is organized. It starts with the problem or, or issue. It begins with a attention grabbing. Um, it actually, it has an interesting fact that also has a quotation mark or quotation in it. It begins with that. That's what you do in your problem or issue. I noticed that over 90% of you did not have a good lead on your classical argument. Now is your time to this is really important in a proposal, especially if you want to get somebody's attention. If they, the first sentence is just blah, blah, blah to them, then they're, they're going to lose interest. And you'll be lucky if they read the rest of it. So be sure you do that. You start with an interesting lead. You need to, I just want to bring this out. You need to have at least three credible, re relevant sources. And if you notice in the sample paper, it does have three. They have to be from different sources and different quotations. Now, each one of them has to be formatted as an in-text citation. You need to go over that. You need to look at my sample copy. Some of you still are making those mistakes and you're probably not going to pass this paper if you don't follow the instructions. Remember to use language designed to convince your audience about the problem, take into account assumptions about the problem and, and existing solutions. You might be talking to the city uh, council of Dallas and they're probably looking at you going, okay, well, we already have programs and this and that. So what are you going to tell them that they don't know? In your solution, you're going to provide your thesis, a, real, uh, a realistic solution with two main points, two part plan about how you're going to fix it or alleviate the problem. The solution should be the main position of the paper, therefore it's your thesis and should explore the complexities of the issue. Benefits of the solution. Well, that's where you're going to provide compelling reasons why the readers must act on your solution. Maybe your solution will totally obliterate the number of homeless people living under bridges and panhandling and doing things that irritate people. And so, of course, the city might be interested in knowing that, but you need to explain to them 
if they put money into something, what are they going to see in return? It's the same thing as if it was being offered to you. So explain the positive implications of your solution and consider others' perspectives, okay? What might other people say about this genius plan of yours? Um, and you could also, but somewhere here, you need to show opposite of what you're advocating for. What are some other ways people might look at your plan? You One might be, this costs lots of money and but it is well worth it then uh your conclusion you're going to reiterate repeat the main elements your thesis and your main points and then you will have a call to action if you notice that the sample paper actually has one at the end you need to have something similar then on the final page, you have to have your MLA citations from the three to five reliable sources used in the paper. So each reference should introduce the source using an attributed tag. In other words, saying, according to Hannah Grace Thomas, comma, the number of homeless people in Dallas is up 7% since the pandemic if Hannah is indeed an expert source. And so that would be an attributive tag. That means you're giving her credit for it. Explain the significance of the information from the so source. How does that fit in to your plan or your overview or your solutions? And you need to have a correct in-text citation. Now, when you're revising and editing each other's, you need to really check for this. Some of you are wonderful about it, but then again, I would say 90% of you are not. You still don't pay attention to how your in-text citation should be formatted, and you need to do that for this. Here are all of your requirements. I didn't mean to do that. All of your requirements here. You have to have your MLA formatting for in-text citation and works cited page. Works cited page listing three to five reliable sources that are cited within the essay, three to five pages of text, appealing visual designs, uniform subheadings. You'll see those in the bold that I have. Okay, two visual elements such as data, graph, and or image related to the proposal. And I've got something of each of those in the sample one. Then each picture must have at least a 25 word interpretation or caption that explains how that uh, picture fits into what you've said. All right, th this is what you're going to be evaluated on. So I'll let you read over that. Um, then a final note is this, this paper is not about you, it's about the issue. Therefore, the following words and phrases do not belong in your essay. I, me, myself, we, us, in my opinion, I think, I believe your paper is also not about your reader and you do not know your reader personally. Therefore, the following words do not belong in your essay either. You, your, your, and yourself. Please, I, you need to make sure in your original writing that you're staying away from that. I don't care that it's your opinion. It doesn't matter. And it also has your name on the proposal. I could look at the top if you've done that correctly and see your last name in front of the page number. So I don't care. And when you say you, you're preaching to someone and people don't take too kindly to that. You need to do this. You need to do that. You don't like to hear your parents say that to you. Definitely, you don't want to put that in a formal paper. So stay away from first person. I've told you this before. Some of y'all still haven't, haven't followed suit. And also um, keep out the I think or in my opinion. And please leave out the word well. Well, I don't know if blah, blah, blah. Leave that out. It's what's called an extraneous word that you don't need. 